If we were to tell you that deep within your soul lies the killer instinct, the will to survive that set early humans apart from the rest of the animal kingdom, you'd probably assume that this video was going to be some marketing bullshit about being your best self and making it to the top. Well, this video is going to mention certain elements found in marketing and the business world, but it's not about a quick fix to make it rich. We are going to explain to you what it means to release your full potential, how it can help you, and how it can affect the path you take in life. Are we going to suggest standing on a mountaintop and screaming at the top of your lungs? Well, you'll just have to wait to find out. What is your killer instinct? Often known as fight or flight, sometimes called your will to survive, this is a residual part of your early human ancestors. Just as much as they gave you the colour of your hair, the shape of your face, the sound of your voice, the killer instinct is a drive to succeed that was passed down to you for a very important reason. To save your life. From the smallest fish to the largest mammal, there is a recognition of danger. They can understand that certain sounds, smells and sights mean potential death. This triggers an innate force within them to either run away from the situation or take on the threat in a fight. Primates, which include the great apes such as gorilla, chimpanzee and orangutan, often fought back against their predators or used their mental agility to problem-solve their way out of a dangerous situation. We have touched on this subject several times in previous videos. In modern society, there are far less primal threats to humans, but our ape brain is still hidden deep within us. Think of situations where someone is angry and the rage builds up so that they feel as if they can't control it. At these moments, people are often observed taking part in great feats of strength, such as lifting extremely heavy objects, running faster than usual to catch up with someone, or even punching someone with more power than usual. In the 21st century, it has become taboo to speak about these primal instincts and out-of-control behaviour because we like to see ourselves as a civilised society. But what happens if you squash down and try to deny the fact that you have these mental reflexes within you? It can be unhealthy for you to try and ignore your animal instincts. Instead, you should learn to accept them, understand them and even use them for your own benefit. Today, we are going to show you how. What does killer instinct mean to society? If you take it out of context, referring to something as a killer instinct can sound inappropriate, especially in today's millennial and Gen Z society where true crime serial killer documentaries are frequently trending in the top 10 on streaming platforms. So, what is the dictionary definition of this turn of phrase? Merriam-Webster says, Killer instinct, an aggressive, tenacious urge for domination in a struggle to attain or set a goal. So, less Ted Bundy and more Ted Talk. If you have ever looked at entrepreneurs, small business owners, sports players, even paramedics, medical staff and other so-called professionals, people that have a strong drive that urges them to commit to their goals and always try to do better, these are people tapping into their killer instinct. Before you go beating your chest and reenacting the Wolf of Wall Street movie, it's important to realise that you could easily be one of these people without going to that extreme. Just because you're having a break from things right now, or you may not have started your journey, or you could be cynical about all of this, it doesn't mean that your killer instinct has gone away. At times when you are emotional, be it anger, fear, elation or excitement, you will feel a small connection to your primal self, whether you admit it publicly or not. So, how can embracing your instincts work in your favour? 
The difference between races and paces. To describe the subtle differences between using your killer instinct and ignoring your killer instinct, people have come up with a model based on racing car drivers. Imagine that there are two drivers taking part in the same competition. We'll just call them driver R and driver P. Now, driver P has a pacer mentality. He is extremely good at his job, he knows his car inside out and he really wants to win the competition to make his team proud. He loves driving, he is happy with his brand sponsors and he is in a comfortable place in his personal life. For him, this competition is important and he has the determination to win. Driver R has a racer mentality. He has all the same attributes as driver P, but when it comes to practicing and on the day of the race, he uses the natural adrenaline, nerves and anticipation to heighten his mindset. He embraces these animal instincts and psychs himself up to a point where there is no option other than to win the competition. He can't even envisage coming second, let alone not placing at all. His focus is razor sharp. He is utilising the killer instinct and assessing each moment just as a lion would stalk its prey. If driver P, the pacer, loses the competition, he will feel disappointed. The thought process will go something along the lines of a small time feeling frustrated or angry, a small time processing what happened, then acceptance, and then planning ahead for what they can do better in the future. If driver R, the racer, loses the competition, he will be extremely angry and may even feel that he despises his competitors or himself for not being the best. This is not something that is intentional, it's his body and mind coming down off the chemical cocktail that has been coursing through his veins during the competition. These are hormones released by his primal instincts that he used to do anything necessary to win. To take out this frustration, the person may need to go for a run, go to a gym or do something physical to bring their body out of that zone. If you've ever seen someone kick something or punch a wall in frustration, this comes from a deep primal instinct, a killer instinct. So is it healthy to embrace your killer instinct? We're sure after those descriptions that you're wondering if it's actually healthy to use this untapped instinct, this potential in your daily life. Well, this video is all about releasing your full potential, not just about your killer instinct. So let's discuss how it can affect your health, living life to the maximum on a regular basis. As with most things in life, moderation is the key. Determining the purpose of the situation you're in will help you to understand whether you should be nurturing your killer instinct for competition and commitment, or whether you should maybe ignore it for a while. If you're out 10-pin bowling with your friends, you are primarily there to enjoy yourself, have a laugh and have some light competition. Nobody likes an arrogant show-off. You can put your best foot forward, and whether your team wins or loses, it ultimately doesn't matter, because the goal was to socialise. If, for example, you are called back for a second interview for a job that you are desperate to have, this is the perfect opportunity to engage with your animal instincts and use your natural disposition to be noticed and excel above the other people who are applying for the post. You can do this in ways such as acknowledging your nervous energy and using this to be quick, focused and observant. Use your heightened senses to assess the situations you are given by the interviewer and ask questions or respond in ways that show you are determined and diligent. People who don't engage with their killer instinct can struggle because they are essentially fighting against their own minds and bodies. They feel anxious or excited and they try to hide the feeling because they want to appear in control of themselves. They can't stop the adrenaline flowing through them but they end up stumbling over their words or 
not focusing on the task at hand because they are worrying about something unrelated to the job interview. Learning how your body and mind behave when you are in a competitive situation allows you to be prepared for that feeling, that rush. Then you can engage that part of your psyche when you tell yourself that you need it. In this way, you have some control over any situation because you can manage your expectations. Preparing for an important presentation, training for an event, working towards a timed life goal. These may make the demand that to win, you must be functioning on all cylinders for an extended period of time. This is where it can cause issues. Think of those horror stories of people preparing for a wedding. You have the women turning into bridezillas or even the stereotype of the permanently angry businessman who's trying to close a deal and he can only think of this neglecting his family and his other duties. These types of situations can sneak up on you, especially if you have been under pressure and in a high-stakes situation for some time. If you find yourself being more argumentative than usual or feeling burnt out when you wake up, it could be time to step back for a couple of days, recharge and then re-engage. Remember, the killer instinct was part of a survival mechanism, not a permanent way of life. Why is it important for me to embrace my potential? We can't answer this for you specifically, but we can give you some ideas. The most talked about one is usually winning or thriving. This is what we did as early humans to beat other species to food, water and other important resources. We used our killer instinct to run faster, work for longer hours at problem solving and defend our homes. In modern society, these attributes can mean that you are more dedicated and committed to a job, a sport, an event or a lifestyle and therefore you can achieve your ultimate goal. For some, this is earning money. For some, it's simply recognition or social status. You may find that you are happiest when you're reaching for that target. Something that's not often discussed is using the killer instinct to help you mentally reset and feel calmer, therefore reaching your potential. If you are stressed, worried or unfocused, you can tap into your killer instinct for a specific moment and then afterwards bask in the satisfaction of having completed that task. This could be motivating yourself to go jogging and pushing yourself to go an extra 5k, or maybe you suffer from a chronic illness and your goal is to make it to the store and back with all your groceries. Anything that forces you to feel determined to complete the task in the best way possible. Once you have succeeded and reached your goal, maybe even surpassed your expectation because you're in the winning mindset, you can spend the rest of the day more relaxed and calm in the knowledge that you have the power to do whatever you set your mind to. And once a task is complete, that's one less thing cluttering up your conscience. How do I develop my killer instinct? Gary Ryan Blair said... The ultimate measure of someone with a killer instinct is consistency and your ability to rise to every challenge, to bulldoze your way through setbacks and to confront the opposition head on and prevail is the true litmus test. What he means is that each challenge that comes along is a chance for you to hone your instinctual skills and work out how you can personally harness that feeling within you. Are there going to be times when other emotions cloud your vision? Sure. Are there going to be times when you let go of the instinctual feeling and revert back to modern human thinking at a critical moment? Yes, because you might be worried about going full throttle and censor yourself. The truth is, you'll learn to recognise when those animal instincts kick in. You'll start to understand which situations they can be beneficial in and then you can use them to your advantage. 
If you want to stand on the mountain top and scream at the sky to pep yourself up, or if you need to dress the part to engage your killer instinct mode, go ahead, feel free. Wanting better for yourself doesn't make you a bad person, and wanting to be the best isn't a crime. If you have enjoyed this video and you're inspired by what you've seen, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Let's change the world together.